Okay, this is video number three of at least a four-part video series. It might be a five-part video series. Please look in the description of this YouTube video for the YouTube titles in reference to video number one, two, four, and possibly five if the fifth is made. All of these videos will be copied and placed it, pasted into a blog along with the YouTube video's URL addresses and their YouTube titles. Additional cooperating material will be put in these blogs okay, to complement the videos and the, the subject matters pertaining to what the video videos are about and uh, then this uh, blog will be printed out by me <clears throat> I will keep a copy for myself and then what I will do I'll make at least five to six copies of it and then what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> is I'm gonna send uh, one to the one of the two police officers that arrived at this area on July 9, 2014 as a result of me being brutally assaulted at this area while I have a broken arm and broken wrist. And the only reason why it's not in the cast right now is because it's been in it all day long and I take it off every now and then during the day to let the arm breathe. Which, that night and the next morning, my bone on that wrist that's broken was swelled up all the way to here. Okay? Yes, they attacked me with a broken arm and a broken wrist. Now, my name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego, California. And what I'm going to do with this blog once it's made, completed, printed out, six copies are going to be made. I'm going to fax one of them to the police officer that gave me their business card as a result of him giving me the business card when he came down here on July 9th, 2014 as a result of me calling 911. He's going to be faxed a copy. He's going to be sent a copied certified mail return receipt. And then I'm going to, co and then I'm going to hand deliver a copy of this blog to the police department he works at with his name on the envelope. So he's going to be giving the same blog in three different ways. A fax, certified letter to return receipt, sorry about the middle finger, and then uh, in person I'll be dropping it off at the police station. As a result, he will then be able to take the information in the blog, all four to five videos, YouTube titles, and their URL addresses, and go to this created YouTube account that I will create, that these videos will be uploaded into, and witness the evidence and the subject matter pertaining to the evidence that's included in these videos and the subject matter pertaining to why I'm introducing the evidence to him because I do not want any San Diego police officer to ever be able to state all right hold on a second uh, because I don't want I don't want any uh, police officer to ever be able to state that they were not sent information pertaining to any evidence pertaining to the factual realities of me being gang stalked and how I am proving that it is occurring towards me now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you actually what I showed in the first two videos uh, this was this this information that I'm about ready to show you right now is a result of an individual literally uh, making a comment uh, actually making a comment in an email file and sending it to my email account online okay and I'm not gonna say who it was and uh, but I will say this the email account he sent it I think it's a he sent it when he sent it to me that is the email account that I suspect is possibly hacked hold on a second now since cyber surveillance is a methodology of gang stalking since uh, cyber surveillance since it's a method of gang stalking uh, you and computer hacking and email account hacking you can clearly see that uh, me stating that my email account is more than likely hacked is not a uh, uh, peculiar statement. All right, hold on a second. All right, now what I'm showing you is this is what was forwarded to me in an email by an individual online who's also uh, who's um, who's also researching, I guess, this guy. His name is Curtis Webb. Uh, he's a San Diego District DA's office member. Okay, who is being implicated? Once you bring that up, all right. Hold on. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say it again because for some reason the microphone turned on. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it right now. Curtis Webb, San Diego DA's gang stalking. All right, hold on a second. This is because that's what the. It's it's coming out wrong. So I'm gonna stop this and then go back to it. All right, here it is. Okay, Curtis Webb, San Diego District Attorney's Office, gang stalking, and look at what else. Okay, District Attorney's Office. And then once you hit enter, look at what comes up. Okay, the first two you can pay attention to as well. But the third one, his name comes up along with gang stalking and guess what else? Remote neural monitoring. It comes up in the third one. It's flat out mentioned in the fourth one right there, remote neural monitor. Okay, let me hold this phone up. 
clear to see it says remote neural monitor Curtis Webb San Diego District Attorney's Office he's mentioned in the third one the fourth one and the fifth one I strongly suggest you go to this and read it now since this is being forwarded to a San Diego police officer, since he's supposed to be a crime fighter, he now has some information pertaining to a possible criminal in the San Diego DA's office. And so hopefully he'll open an investigation about it or inquire about it to see if this person by the name of Curtis Webb is possibly involved in gang stalking. And uh, I guess the remote neural monitoring that is being discussed as well, the gang rape of the woman, okay, and the UCS. D. Davis, doctor who was her roommate that raped her and then had her gang raped, and how Child Protective Services was implicated in the illegal kidnapping of her child. Now, why is Curtis Webb being being mentioned? If you're a police officer watching this, I would think that since you're a crime fighter, you might want to do some investigating into this individual. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. I want to thank that uh, additional police officer that arrived to the scene on July 9th, 2014, when he asked me uh, what kind of outfit that one of the individuals that came down with the other individual that attacked me, he was asking me about uh, uh, the type of clothing the Mexican had on me. And he mentioned that is it the type of clothing that, being, that can be bought at Dick's. I guess that's what, Dick's Sporting Good? That's a pretty descriptive name. Dick's Sporting Goods. So I dedicate this exposure to his attentiveness. How you doing, buddy? All right. Now, uh, because he was so thorough in trying to be helpful in, uh, in, in trying to uh, make sure that I could accurately describe the clothes he was wearing. Okay, so getting back to the theme of this video, what I'm going to do right now, each of these videos are going to be 15 minutes long. I am verbally taping my statements right now in this video on a cheap recorder. And if any of these videos are not allowed to be uploaded, I will then remake them. Not having a problem doing it because it's my duty as a citizen to inform police officers about possible criminal activity of a member of the DA's office. And to show them also the proof and evidence that I have enclosed in the first video, the second video, and in this one. Now to prove to you that this crime is happening, I want you to listen to this video. And listen to it closely because it's actually the audio. And if you're a police officer that's claiming that you've never heard of gang stalking, I don't see how that's possible because, well, it's a pretty well-known crime. Assaulted now four times in San Diego County. 
I have no doubt in my mind that these crimes were directly connected to gang stalking. The first two brutal attacks happened within a month and a half of each other. Both of them were predicted in email files. The third attack uh, occurred on a sidewalk, okay? That attack was predicted by me in an audio file the morning it happened, 90 seconds before it happened, and 30 seconds before it happened. The fourth attack took place towards me here three days ago, and it was predicted in a video file two days at this location before it occurred, and I still have that video file, which proves the date because the timestamp and the date stamp is still on that video file, which I plan on keeping until I hire a lawyer. Now, it is my intention to not only prove this criminality is happening to me, but to also ask questions about why the San Diego police continue to not file any honest police report concerning the factual reality that I am a victim of this crime. Hold on a second, please. Briefly, I'm going to show, make a statement here. You just heard an audio of a news broadcast of a victim of gang stalking in Santa Cruz County, which is the county that's right next door to San Diego, stating that he's being gang stalked. And the news reporter flat out states that the victim can be driving the car, talking on their cell phone, or walking the street when a group of people try to systematically terrorize them. Well, what occurred towards me on a sidewalk right across the street, right up the street from UCSD on Thanksgiving Day 2013. This is that audio because the event was caught on a tape recorder and then the pertinent section of that event was transferred to this phone. Why are these guys saying gang stalk together as they're harassing me and threatening me? They're both saying gang stalk together, then one says gang stalking, and then that same one says gang of stalking, I'm gonna F you up. Do you have any idea why they're saying this? Okay, now I can repeatedly play this over and over and over again. Now, the individual that assaulted me right across the street on January 30th, 2014 was seen by me on three separate occasions prior to this Thanksgiving event talking to one of these two guys. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. One of the individuals that played a role in this Thanksgiving event was directly connected to some of the homeless bums that had been camping out 150 feet away from me at the same exact area that the perpetrators came from that attacked me on July 9th, 2014. I am in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. Make no mistake about this with every fiber of your being right down to your bone marrow. I will expose these criminalities that are factually happening to me. All four assaults were predicted in media platforms, two of them in e email files. That's right, before they occurred. Four assaults, and I've been threatened to be assaulted on at least three other occasions. Now, if this crime was happening to you, would you not want somebody to advocate for you? And would you, would you ask yourself, if you were a uncorrupted police officer, why wouldn't a police officer make a police report that I am a victim of this crime? And why are people getting around me everywhere I go and saying gang stalking? Because I got the evidence and audio files and video files to prove it. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams, and I'm closing this video down because I want to keep it at 15 minutes. Please look in the description of this YouTube video for cooperating YouTube video titles. This is at least a four part video series and those video number one and two and four, their titles will be in the description of this YouTube video. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.